Good morning, everybody. It's Consciousness Rising Mind Your Head here with uh, Rebecca and Natasha. Hello, hello. Welcome if you're watching on YouTube, Truth Pills or Devin McKenzie Friends. Hello. Welcome all. Anyway, today we thought we'd discuss what we're discussing. Pam. Well, I think we're going to talk about entertainment mm. and stuff, but then that's kind of going to lead on to Freemasonry. It's yeah. just kind of our favourite our favourite subject kind of progresses onto it once you sort of start because it's all talking linked, about it. isn't it Taff? it's all linked it is it is it is right so the word entertainment so if we break that down into the three words you've got enter and you've got tain and then you've got ment mm. so obviously enter is come to in. enter come, to come in, in. yeah and then tain is from the french word uh tenir which is to hold and tien which is hold so to enter and hold and then, of course, we learned in the other um, videos that we did that M-E-N-T, meant, mind. means the mind. Yeah. So there you have the word entertainment, to enter and hold. Your mind. The mind. So that's kind of, and you think about entertainment, that's everything, isn't it? From films, movies, TV. Y yeah, music. All of it. All a kind of, a, I don't know, what would you call it? Like a, like a, almost like a trance, I suppose. Well, uh, I do think... Uh, I mean, I've never been a big television watcher. I've gone no. through huge chunks of life with no TV and everyone's thought I'm a bit odd. Um, but I do think it stops you from doing other things. You end up switching it on, yeah, and just monging out to it. And, and uh, you know, when I don't have TV around, I'm much more productive. I do a lot more creative stuff. Yeah. So, and you think about how many people come in from work switch on their TV and literally sit there for, for three, four hours until mm. it's time to go to bed. And then watching. people do it in the daytime as well, don't they? Yeah, in the, well, the daytime TV is absolute trash, it's just isn't propaganda, it? isn't it? I mean, it's I've never crap. watched telly because I don't have any, or films because I don't have concentration span. I actually can't. Really? No, I've never, oh. I've watched, sit down to watch a film and in the past and I'll go, I'm bored within minutes. I cannot, I can't, I don't have the capacity to take it in. <laughs> I mean, I'm crap with films and people often say, oh, you know, from whatever and I'm film like, what? and I'm like no haven't yeah. seen it and they're like what you haven't seen Wayne's World or whatever it is and I'm like no yeah. so uh, I've never been I don't think I've been sort of sucked into that no. very much no luckily it's mm. a good thing isn't it mm. so of course like the television leads on from that doesn't it yeah so tell, tell a, a vision. vision yeah and what do we have on televisions we have programs yeah. don't we so they're programming you. programming your mind they're programming you through um television yeah. yeah and through entertainment and then the word realize is quite interesting as well isn't it because of course when you break it down realize so once you realize you're seeing things through mm. realize mm. so you're sort of seeing the truth if you like mm. isn't it mm. which i think it's quite an interesting one so then media the word media so that is connected to the to the word media spelt m-e-a-d-e-a -E -E how would you pronounce that media media yeah media. it's greek isn't it yeah and then that um if you look into that the origins of that word you get the word medic and the word medica which obviously are both to do with um well you could say sorcery or witchcraft or whichever way you want to put it the, the word um pharma or pharmaceutical comes from the word sorcery yes i can't remember the pharmica is it pharmica? The word pharmica. Yes. Yeah, so. yeah medica. It's a similar type of thing. It's like med medical. I suppose medical if you look at it, medic, medica. But then also uh, the word M-E-D-S, meds, is also related to the word um, the magician as well. Mag uh, magi. Yeah, magi. So meds, magi and magician, they're all connected as well. Oh, it's all so connected. They're all connected. Dash. So the medias, or the medias, if you want to say it phonetically the same as the word media, mm -hmm. um, they originated from old Persia. Uh, and basically they were considered the wise ones and the kings of the world at the time um, called on them to put spells on their enemies. So they were kind of used to put spells. And back then they, they were believed to actually specialise um, using propaganda techniques and invoking various forms of indoctrination. So it's, it's basically they were the... The Medea were the spell casters using propaganda of that time. Yes, and they were invoking various forms of indoctrination based on mind control. And by doing this, they could submit a person's power or wealth. So that's why the, the kings used it, used them to, to gain stuff from the enemies, sort right. of power and wealth. And then obviously in mythological terms, it represents a goddess figure. And she's the goddess of illusion. 
and she's a specialist in sorcery and witchcraft, and she was murderous. Uh, she was a hypnotist, uh, and she also used drugs to put people into complete delirium. Wow. So the whole media um, umbrella is about sort of spell casting, brainwashing, manipulation through what what you're being yeah shown. What you're being shown. I mean, if you put if put it sort of into how it's used today, so the Medes' ancient like sacred knowledge, if you like, um, which in essence should have been uh, maybe available to everyone. It should never have been particularly secretive. But it's being misused by these secret um, societies, like the Freemasons, for like specific elite purpose. Mm. Um, and it's basically taking subversive symbolism to manipulate the masses. And then these psychopaths totally, they understand the working of the brain, of the mm. human brain. Mm. These, these people, these Freemasons, these high up people are generally psychopaths, as we know. Yes. In corporations. Yes. You know, in, in everything that the higher up, that the sort of high 3% generally tend to be psychopaths by yeah by definition don't they you can't really do that sort of stuff no if you don't have unless that, that you're type a psychopath. of personality yeah. yeah so basically they understand the working of the brain and they do this by manipulating the media that is absorbed so, by so many people today i mean i remember reading i can't remember when it was but there's actually a patent registered of a frequency that the television puts out oh yes it's doing that as well uh, isn't it? yeah that, that brainwashes you yeah. Um, and it, there's an actual painting. Well, if you think about when a mix. child is watching a cartoon or enthralled in something, you, you cannot, can't get them away. No. They, they are, it is, it is it's, it's a, like you say, they're probably hypnotised by a frequency. It's hypnotic, yeah. It's, yeah. And also we know that the experiments that the Germans were doing in the concentration camps were all about working out these psychological, you know, um, work, working out how to manipulate. It's all manipulations now, yeah, yeah. Manipulate the brain and consciousness. And all of that was, a lot of that was discovered in the, well, that's what they were doing in the concentration camps when they horrendous, were. Horrendous, yeah. It? Absolutely horrendous, yeah. Really bad. So, um, Walt Disney obviously is a common entertainment thing that, you know, lots of people it's to massive, let their kids. It's yeah, it's huge. But actually, uh, they're very heavily into the occult and Freemasonry. So there is a lodge called the Palisades. Palisades, would you pronounce that? Palisades, yeah. Palisades Lodge. And it's in Hollywood, and it's number uh, 637. Uh, I don't know nowadays, because obviously Hollywood's gone very quiet, hasn't it? There's not much talk about Hollywood, full stop. But in the past... They've all had... been busted! They're gone! <laughs> but in the past, it, they were rumoured to have 1,500 uh, members. And the serving members include... I don't know these people, because I don't watch movies or anything, yeah. but Glenn Ford, Douglas Fairbanks, Clark Gable... But apparently most of the Paramount Pictures actors were involved in this 1,500 lodge in Hollywood. And then within this group, um, they had a much smaller group. And it was um, in the heart of the New Orleans Square in Disneyland. Um, and it was called, it's an inner club basically, called Club 33. Interesting mm, number. I've heard of that, yeah. And the entry fee... Uh, was considered to be around uh, fifty thousand dollars dollars to do just just to to enter it to like hire it out if you like and then they had an annual membership fee of uh, fifteen thousand dollars so the lodge was built in nineteen sixty seven so it wasn't really that long ago was it but that that was a lot of money for then I mean it's a lot a lot of money now but mm. that was a lot of money then a lot yeah. more money back then I mean I then. guess it's still up and running now to be honest and it was used it's used to wine and dine the elite um, and obviously probably for other nefarious uh, activities I would imagine mm. what with it being connected to Disneyland mm. you know it's kind of there's a, a allegedly there. there's tunnels isn't there under Disneyland there's a whole world so. under Disneyland isn't there a, yeah. a whole sort of city yeah yeah so basically Disney is completely drowned in occultism yeah and sex basically yeah and yeah. I mean yeah we know now we've we've seen the imagery the symbolism in these children's programs pretty hideous isn't it it is bad really bad what examples are there i think when you look at the cover of the lion king it looks like the lion's nose but it's actually a lady's bikini isn't it the back of her bikini it's, bottoms yeah with a bit yeah with it with a sort of bit a bit of a, a thong thongy thing on yeah uh and then there's um and then when I think they're looking at the stars in The Lion King as well and it, they spell out sex. Yeah. Or smoke or something comes out and it, it spells out the word sex. And so isn't that's the, the Disney castle in the background, isn't that a That's phallic, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And in the uh, mermaids, I think, the mermaid one. 
I'm not sure what they're called. But if you if you watch these films looking for these symbolisms, you see them everywhere. The the symbol for um, boy love, you know, the triangle for paedophiles, that's all it's over. It's all through, it's imagery, isn't it? All the way through, yeah. it's all of their, their patterns on it. And if you think about it, think of all the Disney princesses. They're all under, like, they're always, they come across about the age of 15, don't they? And they always end up wanting to be with an older man. Mm. It's like classic mm. in all of them, isn't it? Mm. They, they always seem to be that sort of age. Um, and then you've got Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, which we looked into a bit, didn't we? Oh, yes, yeah. Which is all about drugs! It's about drugs! It's all about cocaine. Yes, cocaine, and that's very... Um, a cultist as well, isn't it? Yeah. Sort of use that. Yeah. So if you think about the names of the dwarfs, I can't think of them offhand. So you've Sneezy. got Doc. Well, start with Doc. Doc. He's the one who gives out the drugs. He chops them out. Chops them out. Chops the lines and out. And you've got Sneezy, who's uh, got a little bit of a tickly nose, isn't yeah, he? Yeah. He's, been... he's just snorting a line. <laughs> <laughs> and you've got Grumpy, because he needs another line. He's on a come down, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, he's on a come down. And you've got Dopey, who's just so messed and up on drugs. He's off his head. Yeah, he's, he's just off his like tits. ridiculous. Who's yeah. Sleepy? Sleepy. Had enough. Sleepy's been up all night. <laughs> He's had enough. Who have we missed out? Was there one called Happy or? Yeah, he's off his face. Yeah, he's off his head. He was at the goods, you know, he just had his first line. Yeah. He was happy, wasn't he? Like, he's yay! banging, he's ready to go out raving. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's like, you know, and again, it's strange, isn't it, that there was um, this this lady who lived in a house with seven men. Little, that's seven little men. It's a bit bizarre, isn't it? Yeah. A bit bizarre. And there's the, um, I don't remember the name of the film, but the one where you've got, I think they're mice. And they're going down on a roller coaster. And in the oh. background, it flashes up of a lady completely naked with her boots Yeah, out. what is that called? Um, the, rescuers? the Rescuers? The Rescuers. I yeah. remember being taken to the cinema by my aunt and being taken to see that when I was a little yeah, girl. Yeah, and it's, it's a flash, yeah. isn't it? It's a flash. And then also, I think on one of the... I think it might be the good old Mickey Mouse or Pluto or, you know, one of the originals... Um, they're in an optician at one point, and the optician's thing board on the back. Oh yeah, spells the out Illuminati. Letters. Yeah, yeah. Which goes Illuminati. with your t-shirt. Yes, this, this, Rebecca made me this for my birthday. Yeah, and we've got our titty t-shirts on titties, today because we both got really big tits. Massive, as you Huge can see. Tits with a... I can hardly, I can hardly move for mine. I know, I was tired. You know, <laughs> so we have to like, Get you know, enhance back our titties. Yes, don't we? we do. We have to uh, announce that they're there. Because no one can see them. Right. Um, the other thing I just wanted to say quickly about, about sort of Disney stories is when I was uh, studying um, about creativity and, and language, we looked at fairy tales. Mm. And, um, you know, we kind of concluded that they'd often been di what we call Disney-fied. But actually, a lot of the traditional fairy tales are pretty dark. They're very dark, aren't very they? Very dark. And nursery rhymes. They're, yeah. all, they're all to do with death and really plagues dark. and Absolutely. just weird stuff. Yeah. And Humpty when, Dumpty. And the original Cinderella is so flipping dark. Is it? Yeah, like she kills her um, original mother and it's because she wants ah. to sleep with her father. Ooh, and then he, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I won't go in. It's not actually called Cinderella. It's, it's called got another else. name. But it's where and they Disney originally... took it. Yeah. Well, there were several other versions before that where it got a little bit And who easier. wrote those then? That wasn't Hans Christian Andersen. Did he do the nice ones? Uh, no, they, I mean, the, they did the retellings. I see. Uh, the Grimm Brothers and Hans Christian Andersen, they sort of did retellings and ah. they made them a little bit more palatable for people. I see. But and the originals. Yeah, the originals, really dark. Ooh. Uh, Little Red Riding Hood, that's all well, that's about... That's dark as well, isn't it? Yeah, though? really dark. That's all about basically uh, a very young girl being tricked into... Um, Having having sex, with, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, so it's interesting, anyway, that 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 things like that, all the stories that have come down through the line, have actually been very dark, taken by Disney, sort of fluffified on on the outside. Out, outside. But then when you look a little bit deeper, there's still all the that true dark. meaning is there. Yeah, the, the, the true darkness meaning is there. Is, but they, yeah. yeah, they they Disneyfy it, like you said. Yeah, Disneyfy it. Ooh. So it's all a bit. Ew. Ew. Yeah. So Freemasonry, as we were talking about Freemasonry, so it's the largest worldwide worldwide oath taking secret society, which I think most of us yeah, pretty it's much massive. know that, don't we? Yeah, it's in every country. Yeah, and it was it started off as a very humble um, organisation for um, for stone workers, craftsmen. It's like a guild. Yeah, it's like a guild. Yeah. Um, and it was believed to have formed in England and Scotland in uh, the fifteen hundreds. So it comes from the UK originally. Yes, yeah, England and Scotland. Yeah. Another thing for us to be proud of. Yay! <laughs> and then, so the Masonic lodges they began showing up in the in England and also in the colonised countries as well. That was all part of the 
I guess if it, the anything process. that came from England was then sort of transported well, it was around the world. Spread, wasn't it? Once you owned everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they popped up during the 18th century, and a guy called Adam Weisbolt. Don't know if I said that right because I'm not very good at German. Uh, he formed the Illuminati in 1776, and he founded the Lodge of Theodore, which was in uh, Munich. And he was befriend- befriended and funded by Mayor Rothschild. Oh, our old friend. There we go. Our old friend Mayor Rothschild. <laughs> there we so, go. So basically, the Illuminati come from the Masons. Yes, because Illuminati means um, the light, enlightened, doesn't it? To be enlightened. Yeah, and that's enlightened. when you look into Masonry. That's what they're trying to do. What it's all about, isn't it? But they're yeah. being enlightened by darkness. Lucifer. I think. Yes, I, I'm, I agree with you, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, so so craft masonry is, so basically the Blue Lodge, the Blue Lodges is sort of, I don't know if people have heard of that, but the Blue Lodges are kind of like the levels that we kind of see, I suppose, in society. So they're, they're the lodges that we see in our towns. Yeah. They're Blue and they, Lodges. And if you think about them, lots of them do have blue... Well, yes. ...paint and decorative yes. stuff, don't they? And, and a lot of the... Yeah, that Stuff one, there's blue. a big one in Plymouth that's yes, blue, blue, and that one it? in, where did we go the other week? Uh, Biddy, Biddyford. Biddyford, yeah, that was blue, wasn't it, was it blue, as well? Yeah, yeah they, like the, blue. they like the blue. And no other levels of any masonry are accessible without this first three degree, these first three degrees. So you have to do your three degrees to yeah. move on, move on up. To move on up. But again, it's interesting, I'll talk about that in a minute. So basically you have entered apprent- apprentice, which is your first degree. Mm-hmm. Then you have your uh, master mason. No, you don't. Then you have your fellow craft, right. which is the second degree. And then the third degree is your master mason. Now, in essence, that is the full... Monte. Yes. Because I I got that... I, I didn't realise that. I thought that to be a full mason, you were a 33rd degree. But actually, it's just those first three... And then you're a fully fledged. No, so basically, oh. no, 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 no. It's right. Yeah, no. Oh, it's right. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So basically, so what it is is, so you're not past the third degree up to the thirty three, and actually some ancient um, rites, masonry rites. There's like Swedish rites. There's loads of them. They they've got up to ninety hundred. They can have as many as they want. Do you can just keep going. Yeah, because what they are is they're they're a lateral thing. So someone with the, who was at the twenty twenty first degree ranking. Is the same as a thirty third. Do you see what I mean? They, they, they. It's like an honorary thing. Does okay. that make sense? And if you look into the words, it's like there'll be things like the Traveller Guild, the This Guild. You know, they've all got these stupid little. So it's basically another feather in your cap. Yeah, but it, but it's the first three that um, that are the, the 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 three. So when you become a master mason, that is considered the full monte, if you like. But if you want to become a thirty second degree mason, which is the one before the thirty third. Um, you have to have been a master mason for at least 14 years. Oh, okay. So it's quite a long time. So there's a time, yeah, so yeah. there is a sort so, of So criteria. basically, well, they're, they're sort of concordant, if you like, or append, appendant bodies of this, uh, you know, the, the, the blue lodges, if you like. So the two main common ones, and I have to write these down because their names are just Mental. weird. They're so weird. So we could go with the York right. Mm-hmm. And that's the oldest of all the rites. Mm. And that seems to be, from my research I've done, practice mostly in the UK. It seems okay. to be... A, 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 so that's or, the, or, the British version. Yeah, and perhaps like, Europe as well. Right. Yeah, perhaps. So there's basically 10 degrees in that one. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're broken down into three separate subgroups. So you have the Royal Arc Masons, mm. and there's four degrees in there. So there's four separate sections. Mm. And then once you've completed those four, you go to the Council of Royal and Select Masters. Mm. And there's three subdivisions in that one. Mm. And then after that, you become a commander of the Knights Templar. And there's three degrees within that of one the Knights well. Templar. Yeah. So that is the York Rites. And then we've got the Scottish Rite. Now, this is the one, it, it, it's Scottish Rite, but it actually originates in France, from what I've seen. Mm. Um, and this seems to be the one that the Americans. And the Canadians yes. seem to follow. So okay. this one has the 30, 33 okay. degrees. So um, which would which would figure with Disney being yeah a, being yeah a with it being being yeah, American yeah, yeah yeah. So obviously this starts at the fourth degree mm-hmm. because you've got your first you've got three to already. Do your first you become three. your master mason, yeah. and then you go into a section here between the fourth degree and the fourteenth degree, and that's called the Lodge of Perfection. Mm. And the fourth degree, you become a secret master. And by the 14th degree, you become a grand elect. And then it moves up. So between the 15th degree and the 18th degree, 
you then become, it's the chapter of Rose Croix. So you've got to do all of those within that subdivision, if you like. Mm. And then the 19th, de- 19th to the 30th degree, you're in the Council of Kadosh. Mm. And then the 31st to the 32nd degree, you're in the Consistory of Sublime Princes. And then once you are a 33rd degree, you're the Supreme Council Sovereign Grand Inspector General. Oh, they like their <laughs> titles, don't they? So it's believed that there's about 4,000 of those. In the world or in America? No, in the world, I believe. Uh, and 160,000 within the um, Scottish within right. the Scottish right in itself, yeah. And interestingly, um, I did write it down somewhere. Um, in the UK, I think it's, yeah, in England. So there are some, some people do go down the Scottish right and not the York right in England, but it just seems to be more favoured in America. Mm. So in England, at um, any one time, you can only have 75 Freemasons at a 33rd degree at the same time. So in other words, if you were heading to be a 33rd degree, you've got to wait for somebody to somebody, die. yeah. Or step down, or what? Yeah, or probably step, be die, wouldn't you it? You can't step down, can you? Oh, no, of course you can't. Can't yeah, step yeah, down. No, no. Once you're in, you're in. So, yeah, so, oh, I've missed all my paperwork up. Yeah, so that's the, the two most common, but like I said, there's lots of other subdivisions and yeah. all sorts. I mean, it, it's it's a mind boggling thing, isn't it? And they, they seem to love, uh, you know, I suppose by having all these titles and that, they're encouraging people to aspire to the They're next. ridiculous though, aren't they? The but it's wording. very ego-driven. Yeah. It's very it's ego-driven, isn't it? It's it like, is. oh, I'm a grandmaster of the, you know, smelly sock or whatever. Well, I'm like, it's a Templar commander. Yes. I'll have you And know. also notice you, the Knights Templar and the Rosicrucians, right? There was a, the... Yeah, ro- they're trapped the, the Rosicrucians. Yeah. Because I've come across them in my mystical learnings when ah. I was, yeah, when I was... Uh, you know, um, finding out about working with, you know, obviously, well, I guess it's, it is magic, but in a good way. In a good way, yeah. They both came up as... Oh. Um, so I wonder whether originally they were good. Probably, yeah, because they, sa- they sound quite... Yeah, the Rosicrucians and the Knights Templar... Templar were good, weren't they, back in the day? Back in the day, yeah, because the Knights Templar yeah, were supposed to they be were good. looking for the Holy yeah, Grail. They, they, they were, yeah, they yeah. were considered good. But it's um, a, a, a little-known fact as well about the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry... Um, and the 33rd sort of ritual ceremony mm. is that it's um, Jewish in origin, so Jewish in nature. So the religion of Judaism is based on the Babylon of Talmud. Is that right? Talmud? Talmud. 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 Uh, and the Jewish Kabbalah. Um, and then the reason they use um, 33, so for the 33rd degree, is to do with the amount of vertebrae yeah. you have. 33 in, in your spine so yeah so you start and then once you get to the uh here which is at the, the base of the skull you are considered to have achieved a mental realization and enlightenment once you've got to the 33rd vertebrae which is there but that i don't think that correlates with the york right or anything i think that's specific to the scottish right and maybe to the cabal i mean it's interesting because didn't madonna go on about she yeah, got she really was, into she spread that red yeah. thing didn't she and that red. was around the time of ray of light when she did all oh, those songs so yeah. she got into it she was sort of promoting yeah um the cabal and um and as we know she joined the other side at some point definitely yeah Not i sure mean we when. can just quickly just talk about so the first three initiations um the sort of ritual because people always ask what they get up to don't they so the entered apprentice, which is the first degree, the initiation, basically you make it a promise in regards to your obligation and see, secret keeping of the Masonic movement. And I have read at this point you can pull out. So prior to this point, there's no obligation. So you could take your first degree and pull out after that? Or pull out within it, I would presume. Right, okay. So you could go, actually, no, this, is, once this isn't for me. Because that promise... Yeah, there's no re- ritualistic... Yeah particular thing that seems to go on here so then when you go on to the second degree which is your fellow craft Mm. so you have five individuals that conduct this ceremony and then the candidate wishing to join so they're blindfolded first of all lovely Um, and then they have a rope tied twice now some lodges do it around the wrist allegedly others do it uh, around the neck and then you have to roll your right trouser leg up Mm -hmm. and then you wear a slipper on your left foot (laughs) Sorry to laugh. <laughs> just that's ridiculous. And then, yeah, no, can you imagine it? All these men. And then um, there's an extensive, like, isn't verbal Isn't your arm ritual. out? As well? Isn't your sleeve out? That as comes well? later. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. Uh, yeah, so then, um, then you have this, like, extensive, like, verbal dialogue, and it begins with three knocks at the door. 
knock 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 hang on <laughs> that's the start yeah so then you become to become like the master mason so this one is just it's just, just well brings out weird visions doesn't it so the candidate <laughs> so this is to get third degree, third yeah, this, degree. this is your master mason yeah right, this is okay. your third degree. so the candidate undresses until he is down to his shirt and pants so at this point both knees and then you roll up the sleeves so that both arms are shown so they're in their pants with their <laughs> with their normal shirt on rolled up yeah but they wear these awful Y fronts don't they uh. <laughs> <All> stained <laughs> uh. <laughs> Yeah, but they were disgusting ones. Yeah, so basically <laughs> their arms and their legs are on show. Mm. And then this time the rope is wrapped around the body three times. Right. So, yeah. Instead of around the neck. Uh, three times. And then, then, then they're considered prepared. And then they're taken to this front door, bearing in mind they're, they're blindfolded. And you get your... Three knocks. Three knocks again. And then you have... They initiate this intensive ritual like they did before. And all I've managed to find out is it includes the final oath which is the oath to the master masonry. Yeah. So at that point, you you're are... In. You're in. You're, you're in. in, you're in. You've so done, done then your... you looked into the actual 33rd bit, didn't you? Yes, I looked into the 33rd degree. Uh, so for that one, you have to wear black trousers, you have bare feet and a bare head, and you wear a long black robe, and you have a black cable <laughs> toe, T-O-W, so I'm assuming that's like a rope, around your neck again lovely um, and your legs around the stage <laughs> like a dog <laughs> like a dog oh, so it's a stage is it well that's what it said in uh yeah. in, in that so yeah so i guess <laughs> i guess if you're i guess if you're performing these rituals the rest of the lodge are sat watching okay yeah um so yeah so then you're led around the stage by two men with swords um, and they take the, the um, initiate to the altar where they have four holy books. Oh, okay. The Bible, the Quran, the Book of Law, and the Hindu scriptures. And they're asked, the initiate is asked to kiss the book of their religion and make the choice of which religion. Now, apparently, that's you come full circle because you apparently have to pick a book. Yeah, when you first start. You so first I guess start. you you pick a um yeah. a religion or a religion. I wonder what the book of law is. Is that something? Don't know. Not I've not heard of the book no. of law. I'll have to have a look find out what that is. Um and then you repeat the oath um administered uh, oh, would that be by the oh. grand, by the sovereign but, grand yeah. inspector general? Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, you repeat the oath administered by the sovereign grand. It's, so you can read my writing better than I can. <laughs> and then you swear true allegiance to the supreme council of the thirty third degree. Um, above all other allegiance, you swear never to recognise any other brother of being a member of the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry, Freemasonry, unless he recognises the supreme authority of this council so in other words if you see someone you know in in your work environment yeah, for you, instance you don't yeah let it know it be known but if it's another 33rd degree you can do a little uh, right, is that right? maybe when they do that well they do this a lot i mean i've seen pictures of yeah. fauci and also that is freemasonry yeah. you see a lot but of i wonder if they do that. that like so say there was like Someone went to court and there was two, oh, they two do judges. They so do you had court. two judges and they were both 33rd degree. Well, if Would somebody, they show their allegiance to each other? Well, somebody I know was in court and actually went down because the police officer lied to the judge and then did a Freemasonry. And did it. Wow. And then they were, yeah, so they were wrongly convicted because of, uh, because the policeman, you know, won- was involved. Yeah. So basically, if you're a, if you're a high level, mm. it's that oath of the that you've taken within the Freemasonry is higher than any oath you'd have taken as a oh, policeman. Yeah. It judge. overrides any other oath. This is why, uh, you know, two thirds of our police force are allegedly Freemasons, and that means that they will operate outside of the law because mm. they will op- they operate they the the buck stops with them with their lodge, yeah, not with the law, and that's why we're in a lot of the pickles that we're in. Um, so the, uh, I don't know. So what, is that when they then drink from a so the, skull? Yeah. So this the, after that, yeah. So they've they've um, they've make, taken an oath, and then the sovereign grand um, inspector general Twat. closes the ceremony. Oh no, hang on, this bit first. So then, yeah. So then, after he's made his oath, they then drink from a human skull that's upside <laughs> down. They drink wine. Now we wonder if that is wine. 
Certainly doesn't represent wine, does no. it? What does what would the wine represent? Yeah, red wine represents yes. Um, and uh, they state, I now drink. I uh, what well, I now drink. Um, oh, I can't read my writing. Oh, may this wine I now drink become a deadly poison to me as the hemlock juice drink by Socrates. So they state they state that mm. while they drink it. Um, and then the ceremony is closed with a mystic number um, striking with a sword. Five, five strikes, then three, then one, and then two. And then they close with the prayer, amen, amen, amen. And amen means so be it. Mm. So it's a very sort of complex ritual, really, which is full of symbolism. Um and it's quite bizarre, really. These are grown men. And this is also what I what has been found. I mean, this is like a, I would imagine, a theatrical version of what actually happens at, at the 33rd degree level. It, it, this is, this, it, it's... Well, the yeah. secrecy is so great that it actually takes a lot of digging to find and anything. And we'd never really know because anyone revealing that information would get taken down anyway. And the information just wouldn't be on there unless you actually verbally spoke to somebody. Yeah, we wouldn't. We don't know. I mean, there's all sorts of hearsay, isn't it? That there's human sacrifice at yeah. this level. That there's. Well, know. I heard that to become a thirty third degree, you had to kill sacrifice a newborn baby. baby. Yeah. Um, but obviously, we we can't ever confirm that. Yeah. Um, and also, I've also heard that if 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 anybody speaks out, if a mason speaks out, they get their tongue cut out yes. or they get killed and i think that is in one of their um it's in, it's in the initiation yeah, yeah where they and say they're going to cut your tongue and out. if they don't kill you physically they kill you metaphorically yeah. socially they yeah. will ruin you which we've yeah. seen happen with various i mean people like michael jackson i yeah. now believe uh was was a good guy actually i think anybody that the media has torn down and destroyed mel gibson's another one you can be pretty much uh, guaranteed that, that that they were good and that they or were. Or they may well have started there, but they, they wanted, wanted to, to talk leave, out or whatever. Or yeah. they wanted to leave, yeah. and, and yeah. they can't. You can't leave. So you can't. and I think it's interesting to point out that probably in the Freemason, the Freemasons in our local communities are probably possibly at the fellow craft stage, but probably just an entered apprentice. So they are like a front yeah. for the Freemasons to make it look like it's a charitable yeah. organisation and it does good and it does this. And a lot of the, the people at these levels won't really they understand won't even know, possibly. what it's actually all about. No. Right? And I, I've always said that the uh, Masons are Satan's footmen because I think you join and then if you're earmarked as having that psychopathic vibe about you... And I mean, anybody that wants, any men, grown-ups that want to join a big boys club, I, I think that's Roll their trousers up and stand roll there Roll their, their trousers pants. up, stand there in their have a bloody yeah. wide fronts. Yeah, it's all a bit like, well, it's it, it's a bit strange in itself. It's bizarre. But I think then they, you know, they, they earmark the ones that, that are, have got those psychopathic tendencies yeah. and they move them through the degrees and then they get them involved. Yeah, and they move, and also if you were, if you think about it, judges and superintendents and probably high up people in education, obviously the council and that, they will all be. Oh yeah, I would imagine. I mean, they might not be more than a master mason. They might not have done these separate sort of. But I mean, I think uh, you know, I know that I'm, I've upset some uh, masons, and I'm, you know, I know I have, and you know, at the end of the day, that's fine by me. But it's amazing how quickly you then get the police at your door. Yeah. Uh, you know, and it's a bit like, oh, he's he's found his, he's gone down the lodge, and gone. Can you go and give her a visit? Yeah. She's pissing me off. There's definitely and, a connection between some serving that we've done. Yeah, and headmasters, headmasters, yeah, and masons. Definitely. But we know doctors. Uh, you know, and again, not the low level necessarily. It's the the, the managers and the department yeah. people, isn't it? It's the ones, yeah, higher up, higher up, uh, all the way through the judicial system. CEOs as well, all through business. Well, and my father, who was a lawyer when he was working. Um, he was approached very quickly on qualifying and asked to join and he said yeah. no. But, you know, they so as soon as you qualify in law or something like that, you you will be approached. Yes. They want to recruit They want to recruit you and people got, that are in that got, infrastructure. Yeah. And then you can stay at, like I say, stay at the low levels and then you're their foot soldiers. Satan's yeah. foot shoulders is yeah. true. Yeah. And you're giving this rose-tinted view of what it's about and basically you're used and abused to make 
make it look like it's something that it isn't mm. and that's um, lots mm. lots that's where most people stay i think i wrote down some of the how many i think there's it's not very many is it that go up to the higher no degrees. not at all but it's also i think was it six maybe i didn't write it down but uh six million i believe worldwide Masons, worldwide yeah six million but when you think there's how many billion on a, of us on the mm. planet they're not actually that many they're no. just in positions of yeah power yeah so what what could what we can do as human beings is to talk about it. Yeah. Get it out into the open, because uh, you know take the fear out of it. Um, name and shame them if you if you know someone's a mason, call it out. Ask them, talk to them about yeah. it. Yeah. Say we know what you get up to. Ask them if they kill newborn babies. <laughs> I, I mean I really think this is the best thing we can do is challenge people and tell them that we know we know the truth we know what you're up to and you're going down. Yeah, and even if they don't know that perhaps newborn babies or animals or women or whoever are, um, are sacrificed, it's still putting it out there and making them maybe question what they're up to. What they're up to. Is just... that, that, you know that thing that we, that rumour that we've had about certain politicians doing things with pigs? <laughs> and then they made Boris Johnson, because he's half pig, half man, isn't he? He must be, yeah. He is like not it. a human, he is. But he's, he's they a were doing unmentionables <laughs> to yeah. pigs. Now, uh, when I read that, I remember thinking, well, that's part of a ritual. Absolutely, yeah. Anything to do with it. But I heard Cameron as well had... Blair. Blair. Sherry, Blair. Oh, those she's two. Dark, she's, dark. she's worse than him. Yeah, she's, she's worse than him. You can tell her that child-eating teeth. Uh, like, <laughs> yeah, you have a look as well at people's teeth, as Tash said. If you look at the all royals... If you had all that money, wouldn't you get your teeth sorted? Yeah, they're look all at the yellow and jagged for tearing flesh. The bottom ones more so. Even like, so if you look at Prince William, he like he's got quite nice teeth on the top. But the bottom ones, they're uh, all like back, forward, back. And if you had all that money, you'd have your teeth done. Of course you would. You know the Rothschilds, they've all got disgusting teeth. Yeah. So if oh. you see aristocracy or people in these positions with disgusting teeth, chances are they chances eat human are flesh. They're eating human flesh. Anyway, should we leave it on that beautiful? Just, oh, yeah. Oh. No, just one very quick thing as well, just because obviously females. Oh. There are female orders within Freemasonry. Yeah. Um, it's there's the Amaranth. Yeah, Order of the Eastern Star. Yeah, that's the one I've heard of. The Daughters of the Nile, the White Shrine, and there's also youth orders as well. Ooh. The Demole. Yeah. Uh, Job's Daughters and the Rainbow Girls. Is that Job or Jobs? Oh, I don't know. It's, I don't know how it's pronounced. J O B S. It is though. Like as, as a job. Yeah. Okay. Must be Job. Don't know. Yeah. Job's and Daughter the and the Rainbow Girls. So, so they make thought. it sound all lovely. Mm, but actually not, finish with that so yeah lovely it's very dark and satanic yeah so the women are involved but never in the same lodge as the men they've got their own orders uh men can join some of these as well on the female orders some of them are intermixed which well, i'll look into more at some point well you know they like to swap genders they do like to swap genders yeah. and wives yeah <laughs> anyway that's another story yes <laughs> and they like to do each other oh they do yeah there's lots of gay sex yeah, yeah. Lots it's, of... A, it's basically a sex cult yes basically it is if we're going to be honest. If we're going to be honest, yeah, it's a satanic sex cult. Yeah. So, so we'll yeah, leave you. Is. We'll leave you with that <laughs> lovely, lovely thought. Uh, but call it out. Name it, shame it, call it out. Let's bring it to an end. Absolutely. Right, guys. Well, that's it from the Titty Girls today. Illumin Titty. Illumin. I can't even say it. Illuminatities. Illuminatities. Yeah. Um. And we will see you next week. We don't. We, do we know what we're doing next week? No. No. It's a surprise. Might do the court systems. It's maybe. a surprise. Oh, it's a surprise. Bye. See you next week. Bye.